Hi, I'm Katherine Gomes. I'm the author of Apologia series, Exploring Creation with Mathematics. And in this video, I would like to show you a little bit about the structure and the philosophy of the program. And I'm gonna be using level one of this series to show my examples. Now, before I wrote a single lesson, before I started in with level one, I spent a long time looking at research and looking at what neuroscientists have found out about how kids learn math best. And that is an area that is exploding with lots of new discoveries and we know more about how God designed us than we did before. And my view is if we work within God's design, it's so much more effective than if we're teaching in a way that kind of goes against it. So there's a lot of research about how kids learn a new mathematical idea for the first time well, but there's also a lot of research about how we take that new learning and push it into long-term memory so that we have retention and your child doesn't just forget all the math that you're spending so much time helping them learn. So both of those kind of ideas are incorporated into how I laid out the program, how I structured it, and I just want to sort of reveal that to you, give you a behind the scenes look at that structure. piece of research that I really used in developing the program is a progression. The progression is the concrete pictorial abstract progression and this is widely accepted as a great way to introduce new mathematical ideas to students. And it's the kind of thing where if I show you what it means, you'll, it'll click right away and you'll know, oh yeah, I know what she's talking about. So when we first show a mathematical idea to students, say place value in three digit numbers, you want to start concretely. All right, so base 10 blocks are one of my favorite ways to concretely show large numbers. So here you might have your child build the number 218. And they can actually see, okay, this is 100, 200, this is a 10, and then eight ones. All right, they can touch it, they can feel it, that type of thing. From there, you wanna move them to pictorial. And pictorial is where we're gonna have a picture of what we were using as a manipulative, but now we're flat on the page and we're not necessarily getting the blocks out every time. Once we're comfortable there, we can move to abstract and just use numerals or in the future operations, the addition sign, that type of thing. Um, and we're officially in the language of mathematics. And I've actually added a fourth step on my own um, that I think really shows you that your child fully understands the idea and that is application. So application to me means that when we're not in the midst of the math lesson, when you're not with your book open, your child can apply the mathematical ideas. So for instance, say you were playing Monopoly and they owed someone $218 and your child was effectively able to build 218 with the money that they had, they can apply it, they've got it, okay? Let me show you what this progression looks like in the level one book with just one specific example. Chapter five is subtraction. And I start out really assuming that the child hasn't had a lot of exposure to subtraction. So the first thing we do is an activity called squash it. It's a lot of fun. It's very popular at my house where they make a certain number, number of balls out of Play-Doh and then they squash some of them and they count out how many are left. So super concrete way of acting out subtraction. And we're really involving their senses. They can touch it, they can feel it. If you follow the recipe for Kool-Aid Play-Doh, they can smell it. So they're getting introduced to this mathematical idea in a really ta tangible way. There's other activities too, where I still keep it concrete, where they're building towers and breaking off parts. And that's, you know, we're reinforcing that concrete idea. But then we start to move to pictorial, where they can see a picture of what's happening. In some cases, they are crossing out parts of the picture and counting what's left or drawing a picture and then crossing out part. And then you can see I'm starting to introduce the abstraction where they might have a picture and write a number sentence. Or here's a number sentence and they have to connect it to a picture. And then finally, by the end of the chapter, they're ready for just straight up abstraction. Here are subtraction facts with no picture, no blocks, that type of thing. Okay, so that's how the progression works. I use that progression throughout the book. I'm always keeping that in the back of my mind as I build up the mathematical ideas. 
Now it does take some time to build through that progression. So if you look at the table of contents, you will notice that the chapters are grouped by a single idea. So you might spend a whole chapter just on addition up to 20 because I'm moving the kids through that progression and I need several lessons in order to do that. So the chapters are not mixed. There's not a mix of ideas. They're grouped around a specific theme and it was very intentional how I grouped them. I should mention though, we're always talking about relationships. It's not like once we learn addition or subtraction then we leave the other idea behind. I have whole chapters dedicated to just showing the kids the relationships between the different areas of mathematics because that really strengthens their understanding. All right, but what about review? Okay, so when we move on from this chapter, do kids just never practice that again? No, absolutely not. All the research shows that to gain fluency, which means being able to answer it quickly, without hesitation, automatically, you need to do spaced repetition. So repetition in that you need to practice it a lot, a good bit. And spaced meaning that we can't do it all in one day, right? We have to spread it out. So how I incorporated that for you and sort of took that upon myself to plan in spaced repetition for you is I looked at all the facts that they really needed to know, that they really needed to be fluent in. I grouped them and spread them out on the schedule in something called the skills practice. So each week there'll be a certain skill that they're practicing. It's pretty narrow, right? Subtraction facts up to 20, that type of thing. It's not this like huge amount of facts. And I've laid out exactly how to practice it for you in this, this is the teaching guide, okay? So for instance, in unit three, one of the facts, fact groups that you're practicing are subtraction facts up to 10. I tell you what the facts are. And then I give you several ways to practice it. Okay, this top part right here are the ideas on how to practice it. It's up to you to tailor it to your family, but spacing it out like that really leads to long-term retention.